Hello and welcome to this chapter. So this chapter we are going to talk about joints and unions. All right. First, I'm going to show you the types of reports that will require for you to create a union and the type of report that will require for you to create a join. Now you can create the joints and the unions within a query inside of Cognos. Okay, you can do that within a query inside of Cognos or you can do the joints and the unions within the data module. Now it's a good idea for you to do the joints and the unions within your data module so that all the report developers can inherit the engineering that you put in place, right? If you don't do that, then every time the users have to create a report like this, they have to actually do the joints and the unions every time. And right now, there's a heavy shift towards uh, self-service. So if you want a self-service Cognos uh, uh, environment or a, a, a self-service business intelligence deployment, then you are going to have to do a lot of the heavy lifting behind the scenes. Now, a lot of the heavy lifting happens here, right? During my lecture, how to earn $170,000 a year in the tech industry, I broke all the, uh, the flow of data into four different segments. And you see that in the fourth segment or in the fourth quadrant is where you have business intelligence, right? The data comes in, it goes through the data warehouse, data marks and cubes are created, and then Cognos developers, we get to use that data. So here we have a scenario where the tables were not joined. You see, we have some tables and they are coming from different databases and they have not been joined and they have not been unioned. However, as the Cognos developer, you have been asked to join the tables or union them or in other words, prepare the data so that the users are not going to have a hard time. Or maybe you are being asked to join the data or union the data so that you can create a report that is going to satisfy your, your users or the consumers. Okay, so this is one of the, the steps that this is one of the data preparation steps that, you know, you may have to pre uh, perform. You know, if you are going to be a well-paid contractor, you need to be comfortable with joints and unions. And I recommend that you watch a, a lot of YouTube videos about joints and unions because I'm going to give you a very good lecture on how it works, when to apply them during this section. And then we are going to be creating a data module uh, where we upload some files, we first union it, and then we join it to be able to create some reports, okay? So what do you have here? You have some data in SQL Server, some data in Oracle, and some data in an Excel file. All right, so that is where you have the yellows. When you see the yellows, those are data sources or these are databases. Think of it like a different area, right? They are totally different areas, but the same things. Think of this like football, think of this like baseball, and think of this like golf, right? All three are sports. However, though, they are different types of sports, okay? So, you know, when you watch Sports Center, sometimes they will talk about... Um, uh, they will talk about baseball, they'll talk about football, and they'll talk about uh, golf. Yeah, because it, it, is, it is in a context of sports. So as a Cognos developer and, and as someone in the tech industry, you are going to be dealing with different types of data from different databases. And it is your job to be able to combine that type of data or understand that type of data in order to ultimately um, converge them or combine them into reports or dashboards. So you have some data from SQL Server, you have some data from Oracle, and you have some data from an Excel spreadsheet. Your customer wants to see a report in Cognos where you display data from SQL Server and Oracle. All right, so this is what the report is supposed to look like. Then your customer also wants you to be able to create a report where you combine data from this table and this table, from SQL Server and Excel to be able to view this data like this, where I'm showing country profitability, actual revenue, plan revenue, and variance. Now, let me talk a little bit about uh, the first table. You see, I have some cars, right? Nissan, Ford, Volkswagen. And I have some countries. USA is repeating here. So Nissan in the USA, this is the revenue. Ford in USA, this is the revenue. And then there's no revenue for Volkswagen for United States. You see, France has revenue, actual revenue for Nissan, France has actual revenue for Ford. France also has actual revenue for Volkswagen as well. This is the profit per, per vehicle, all right? So this is, they expect to get $300 of profit in the United States for Nissan, 67 for Ford, and so on and so forth, right? But in these different countries. So these are some of the things you need to study when you look at data 
you need to understand the different levels. And if you don't understand, uh, you need to understand the different levels and the relationships between the columns. You know, there's always some kind of master and then a detailed relationship. So you can tell this by how the tables, how the attributes are repeated. If France is repeating and cars are also repeating, you need to understand the relationship between the two and understand their values. You see, this value, is it at the country level or is it at the car level? Okay, at times you might not be able to tell, you need to ask your customer because this is going to affect how you aggregate the data and how you do your joins. So this is, these are some of the keys that you need to be aware of as a Cadmus developer, understand your data, understand the behavior of the data because I talk about this a lot when I'm talking to clients. You see, when I start working for a company, I need to make sure that I understand the, the way they capture their data and the relationships between the the attributes themselves in the tables okay because if you understand it you can ask for someone sitting on this side you can ask someone sitting in this area you see an etl developer or a data modeler to create a view for you they can create a view for you in this section so that your reporting is easier not only will it be easier but it will eliminate a lot of mistakes and errors and it will reduce the amount of time it takes for the reports to be developed if you're a good Cognos developer, you need to be able to speak the, lang the lingo of the ETL developers. This is important and this is very key when it comes to job interviews. So table two is the same 